seems legit. Hi Legitimates, welcome back to my channel. Today we are making the It's Frickin' Bats sign. I love this, I think it's super cute. I have attached a metal chain as a hanger, um, just instead of the other things that I do. Uh, but this sign's super cute. And I've done, this might be a thing, but I've done it so that the bats come down. All I did was essentially flip this over. I like it this way better because it sits around the loops better. Uh, but I think the actual design has this the other way where they're flying upwards. I decided to have them flying downwards, each to their own. But let's get going. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do, as always, is measure a piece of wood. I always give myself two centimetres or just under an inch of leeway so that I'm not cutting right on the edge. I personally find that I'm more likely to wreck a design and it's not worth wasting the whole bit of wood over one or two centimeters. Uh, so I use a jigsaw to chop it up and then we put it straight in the laser. I did line it all up before I did this and this is sped up to a hundred times. Uh, and I do three passes just to really make sure that it's cut all the way through. Sometimes with two passes, I find it doesn't quite get all the way through and that annoys me. Uh, so this is on 100% power at 3 millimeters a second with the air assist on high. Um, and if you don't know what that means, welcome to lasering. 100% power, you can change it. 3 millimeters a second is in fact quite slow. I think this piece with all the letters and everything took about two and a half hours to cut in total. Obviously, we weren't going to watch that at that speed because we'd be here forever. Um, but I like the three passes. Sometimes it will do it with two. Um, but the few times, especially with like fiddly bits, you don't want it to not cut through because then you've got to try and stab it out and it creates a mess and can splinter the wood if it doesn't want to let go. So three passes, three millimeters a second, a hundred percent power. I don't work in minutes because the numbers get too big and I find seconds to be much easier. Um, and also with the, the extra bats through this design, um, I won't be putting them necessarily where they're meant to go. This is just more of a guide. I will be trying to copy this design each time. Um, but unless you mark it on the big circle where you want stuff, it's all going to be a bit more of a guessing game, which is fine, but just keep that in mind. So as you can see, it did the big bit first. You can set it up to tell it which bits to do first, but I didn't really care. So long as it gets done, I'm happy. There's those extra bats in the corner. So now we are on to sanding. I am using my Dremel, which is on its little workstation here. So I can use two hands and I'm just running the edge of the circle all the way around. That will get rid of any of the burn charcoal bits on the edge. Doesn't take very long. I do get the whole way around. I've also sped this up again. I would be here forever. So this is where I decided to put it upside down. And I'm just spraying it with a cheap black. But the cheap white I find is not as good. So I like the Rust-Oleum paint. Then let it dry. Um, I live in Townsville so it dried pretty quickly. But I've come inside because it's hot. And then you're just going to figure out where you want to position this. So the, I have the bats hanging off. This is also to figure out where to put the glue because you don't want the glue to be over the edge. Now, just there, I put too big of a dollop and I knew it was going to seep out from underneath. So make sure you put like a light layer of the wood glue. This is just cheap wood glue from Bunnings. And then I'm going to position it around the holes and work on the words. So I like to set it up before I start adding glue. It's just good to have a rough idea what you're doing. Um, again, you can score the white base plate to figure out and position it the same every single time. I don't think it's going to matter. It's more about the little bats, to be honest, because this only really fits one way. And I really like that my bats go down. I'm quite happy about that, weirdly enough. Uh, so I'm just going to position them around until I feel like they're where I want them. This has got the biggest gap down here, so that's why I put them there. And let that dry too. Um, I, again, gave it about four hours according to the bottle. Right, it's nice and early in the morning. Uh, this is now stuck on. I let it sit overnight. Uh, so now we just need to attach the handle. Now, on some of my other ones that I've done, I glue like a little picture hook on the back. But this one has the holes. 
So I went and got 10 mil jump rings from Spotlight. You can also get split rings if you can find 10 mil split rings. I did look at the fishing store, but I couldn't see any. I've also just got two pairs of side cutters. In a perfect world, you'd have one side cutters and one mini pliers, but I don't know where mine are. So now it's just a matter of how high you want this to hang. And my official answer is not very high because the things aren't very far apart. So I'm going to do 30 centimeters or 12 inches. I'm just gonna cut that. Maybe. Those ones are blunt, so let's try it with these ones. There we go. And so then I'm going to take my jump ring. And again, the split ring would potentially be stronger. And I'm just going to hold it right near the joint, and then I'm just going to bend it open. Now, you'll need a fairly large bend for the wood to go through. Um, this I got off Timu. This was a roll in one of my previous videos. Uh, so there will be a link in that video for you if you would like to get the same chain I've got. Uh, it was not very expensive. So I'm going to now just put it through here, grip on, and twist these so that there's no join. You can't have any join at all or the chain will fall off. And then what I want to do, and I know this seems weird, but I'm going to shake it just to make sure that the jump ring is in fact strong enough to not drop it. I do not want this to come off and you want to get these as perfectly in line as you can so that's one side then we're just going to do the same to the other so for those who don't know what split rings are it's like key rings how they, they go around like one and a half times or almost two times so then I'm just going to go over the wood and through and the 10 mil will perfect for this and then I'm going to come up and down I'm going to try and get rid of twists in this as best I can uh, it is chained so it's probably not going to be perfect but you would prefer it to be smooth rather than like a lot of twists so just do your best one or two won't be noticeable but if it's super twisted you will notice so I'm going to grab these two halves bend them back so what you actually do, to get them perfectly in line, you actually go a little bit past. So when you let go and the metal kind of resolves, it goes back to being a center. And then, that's it. It's now got a hanging hook, which you can't see really, because it's black on my dark shirt. Uh, but it's super cute. And that's it. You can add a bow as well if you want to. I'm not going to, because it's going to hide the bats. But there you go, guys.